Hi friends, welcome back to Live with Roxy. It is hot as balls. It is hot as balls. Sweaty balls. It is sweaty, sweaty balls. Sweaty, sweaty balls. Sweaty balls. Stuff to burn in the house, everybody. Uh, back by popular demand. They did not like when you were not on the show. I, I doubt that. No, that's factual. <laughs> um, you guys, you can look in the comments from yesterday. Multiple comments were like, oh, man, no stuff. They were probably just sad because I teamwork's was sad. better than... Dreamwork. Dreamwork. Teamwork's sometimes. better than... There's no I in whatever. Yeah, there's, there's no I in sweaty balls, you know? Sweaty balls. There isn't. It is so hot. It's so fucking hot. It's, so fucking it's just hot. so fucking hot. So there's, uh, I told you guys there was construction here today. It went very well. <laughs> not, not a lot to say other than it went no, great swimmingly much. to be, it to really be clear. Did. Um, it did, but I, it also meant that I was like doing shit today in a way that I couldn't eat. So now I'm having. At least ooh, give them ASMR. ASMR. You can't even hear it. Orgasmic. Wow, it's like kind of a juicy one. Mm. Um, there's a lot going on in the world today. Well, a lot of you guys have been asking for me to start making this new podcast. I don't think this is a good episode to start with. I'm hearing my crunch in the headphone, and it's fucking disgusting. You never know what makes someone feel good inside. A crunch of an apple might just do the trick. I don't know about that. Um, but also, uh, there's real things that are happening on the planet. And well, am I tapping your foot over? Yeah, it's again? okay. We can foot see. Why is my leg so far? Why are you wearing way? socks when it's sweaty ball season? Um, there was a reason. Mm. Love to hear it. I actually don't know that I can explain. <laughs> okay, okay, don't, don't. So this morning when I had to get up <laughs> at seven forty-five to let them in, it was cold as shit, and also they had like all this construction-y stuff around. But I didn't want to put on shoes, but also there was like nails and stuff and I didn't want to. Yeah, I get that. Would... Makes sense. Construction can be dangerous. Is your mom? Yeah. What'd she say? She probably just checking in. What we got? <laughs> I want to know. I asked what the schedule was for this weekend. Mommy, I really need you home this weekend. I've had to make a very tough... Oh, no, I'm going to no, stop. stop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is she okay? <laughs> oh my god! Just the tip on that one. Is that yeah, okay? she's fine. She's good. Aww. Health is good. Love is good. That's all that really matters. Other shit can figure itself out. Wow, still the chewing. <laughs> still with the chewing. All right, uh, but like I said, we're talking about things that really fucking matter on the planet, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The notorious RBG. Yo. This woman will not fucking give up or quit. We could all use a little bit of RBG in our souls. Um, whether whether you side with her or not, which I obviously do, but even if you don't, the tenacity of this fucking woman. Holy shit. Um, and I, I was obsessed with On the Basis of Sex yes. and, uh, and the RBG documentary that came out both, I think that was in the same year, yeah, last year, right? It was. Just the more I learn about her, the more I'm like, I am so in love with her. Um, but we'll be talking more about her and what's going on with her. And my heart is with her completely. Uh, there are more Nick Cannon updates. He, If this has taught us anything, it's that Nick Cannon is attached to a lot of projects. And every project is handling what's happened differently. So we will be breaking that down as well. And then Steph went and picked up the presents that you guys got me. So we've got some unboxings going on. Can I have this last piece of apple? Yeah, I'm going to talk over this because I heard some people or I read some people in the chat You're saying that. It's a little triggering. Really? Yeah, I understand. What does that sound like? It was Noah Denman, I think, to be specific. What's it, what's the trigger? Yeah, what what is it? Is it like nails on the chalkboard for you, or is it that you're hungry and you don't want to be tempted? Tempted to what? Eat an apple. <laughs> Good one. Sorry, I'm losing it, you guys. Good Rock, one. Rock snows. I was up all night. I was too. We just were up all night separately. Yeah. That's sad. I think, like, yeah, my anxiety child went to your anxiety child, and they were just having a really good time together. Did they bone? Yeah. <gasps> we're going to be mother-in-laws? Yeah, of anxiety. What, what is the child of anxiety? Depression? Fear? 
sadness. Uh, All alone again. Uh, shitty decisions. I don't know. There's a lot of child, children of anxiety. Guys, if you want your comment read out on the show today, please don't forget to streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. That's where you can go to show support or in the super chat right here. We've already got some stuff coming in, uh, starting with some of the super chats. We're mostly starting with the super chats because I'm not logged on to Streamlabs right now. So we'll do that in a second. Ben Jones says, hi, guys. Three rando questions. One, Rox, what method of acting are you studying? Two, when did you get into pro wrestling? Three, what is the difference from simping and oh. compassion? What's simping? I've been hearing that a lot recently. Simping is a term that many coin with um, the good man Drake, Champagne Poppy. Mm. It's basically when you like you're like full into you want to swoon like a woman into your life and you like do everything you can to make sure that like, she likes you. So that feels like it has nothing to do with compassion. Yeah. It's a little... So like it's like a front. It's almost like performative. Yeah. Hmm. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, Ben Jones. But I, I that's where that's how I feel like it's described. And real compassion would be. I don't know if you were genuinely pursuing someone and it'd be more than, cause people will be like, it's simping Sunday. Like they just want to have someone to be with on a Sunday. Same. <laughs> I'd be simped right now. Someone simp rocks. Is that, uh, can I no, use it like that? I don't okay. think so. Going back to number two, when did you get into pro wrestling? Um, I don't know. So it's it's not that I'm not in. I'm very into pro wrestling in terms of I have so much admiration, respect. Um, I don't typically watch all the time. I love watching clips. I think it had to do with the Tomorrow Show when I started like five years ago and X-Pac was so involved and Kathy Kelly had gone to the WWE and um, Daria Baronado, uh, Sonia Deville, and like all my friends were over there. So I was like, this is fucking cool. Um, and also when I was a kid, my brother was really into wrestling. So I definitely, what is that? The attitude era, um, that I was really interested in, but it just, I have so much respect for what they do that that's when I kind of got into it. And then, yeah, growing up, I was a huge Jericho fan. So if that's kind of why you're asking, um, yeah, my, my whole life, I've never been somebody who was like wrestling stupid. I've always liked wrestling. Uh, and am I a diehard? No, but I think it's awesome. What method of acting are you studying? Um, I've studied many methods because I have been in acting school since I was five. So I have I have studied all of the major ones, um, if that helps with that question. Um, it's at USC, we had to, you had to like learn different methods. Um, it's not like some other schools that only will teach one of them. So I've learned a lot of them and I feel like I've kind of picked up things from different methods and kind of merged stuff together. Like, um, uh, you know, you hear often that it's not safe anymore to be a method actor because you're taking experiences from your own life and reliving them and that can cause extreme trauma. Um, although I would say that I typically am, uh, but they, there's other methods that require you to create stories that have never happened to you and backstories that you can imagine and make that your truth. I have a harder time with that. That's what my acting coach teaches, Sean Whalen, though. So I kind of borrow from all different schools. Thanks for the question, Ben Jones. I'm sure that was a boring ass fucking answer. No. Lewis really Cox says, yo, 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 yo. Love you both, Roxy and Steph. What was that first sign you did? Was it a hashtag? It was a double piece. Because everyone wants to see peace signs. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Peace. 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 Lewis Cox also said, oh, yeah, this is what I was going to start the fucking show with. Damn it. Duh. Not only is it this true, but it's a national holiday because Glenn Caesar is our uh, mascot, for lack of better words. Glenn is our person here. He is the rock star, and it is Glenn Caesar's birthday, of course. I've been planning for weeks to start the show with Glenn Caesar's birthday. Obviously, I'm out of it. Happy um, birthday, Glenn Caesar. Glenn, you are everything, legitimately everything, and we love you so much. 
And um, it's fitting that I'm going to open presents on your birthday, but and then they're from you. So thank you, Glenn, for being the best human being ever. Everybody send bunnies for Glenn right now. Bunnies for Glenn, bunnies for Glenn, bunnies for Glenn. Mm -hmm. uh, love you. And we're so lucky that we get to spend. Oh, I see you in the chat. Yay. That we get to spend your birthday with you. Um, bunnies and hearts all day. Go into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Um, okay. From yesterday, Bruce Bain after the show said, hey, Rox, hope you're doing well, question mark. Nah. Uh, I was just thinking, hasn't cultural appropriation been one of the most important parts of human history? Electronics, engineering, even pizza. I feel the term being misused a lot these days, loving those hoops. Oh, well, I'm in the hoops again today, so it counts. Um, I feel you on this because I was asked yesterday about if I feel like there's a lot of if I'm upset by all the Jewish cultural appropriation that's taking place and I don't feel that way, I get really excited when people appropriate our culture because there's so few of us that like it to me personally and with only the Jewish culture, I think I get flattered, um, but totally understand why people wouldn't want their culture appropriated. Mm -hmm. I think that's a to each their own. And like, I think the black community, the black community has been very vocal about not wanting their culture to be appropriated. So we have to be respectful of that. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I do think that cultural appropriation, the term is sometimes misused. I wouldn't say, I don't know what you hear, but like, I wouldn't say that because we have a pizza in America that we're appropriating Italian culture. Yeah. Like, I don't think that that, I've never even heard anybody say that. Um, in terms of electronics, uh, you know, like, um, I think that uh, it was a black woman who created the curling iron. I don't think anybody who says, like, anybody who uses a curling iron is culturally appropriating. So, yeah. like, I don't hear that very it's often. It's not with, like, electronics and objects. I think of cultural appropriation as either things that are so tied culturally like in native culture like feathers and certain patterns are birthrights and a part of like the process to becoming like different positions within tribes so in that sense i completely get why they would be like why are you wearing a headdress you have no idea what that even means mm -hmm. and i can't even wear that and i'm native you know what i mean so i think it's that and then also with the black culture in specific, it's like until they stop being persecuted for having braids in their hair or Bantu knots, why would we wear it, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, in terms of engineering, yeah, Ruth Bain, I don't even know exactly what you're talking about, but would love to hear more about your thoughts on that. Chris Martinez in here says, hey, Roxy and Steph, hope you're both having a great day. Mm. We're working on it. Just wanted to give a shout out, a special birthday shout out to Glenn Caesar. Chris, that's very sweet. Aww. Love that. Love that. And love all the bunnies that are going in the chat for Glenn right now. Glenn in here himself on his birthday said, hello, Roxy and Steph. Love you. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Wishing you and the Rockstars band a sunshine and love filled rest of your Friday. Sending lots of bunnies to you all. Hope you have a super awesome and a fuck yeah filled weekend. The rock stars rule. Glenn, what are you doing for your birthday? Other than being here, let us know. Just curious. Yeah. Samir says, Steph's so dope. <laughs> Samir, thank you. It's so true. <laughs> Steph is so fucking dope. <laughs> um, I also forgot that I got a couple of super chats. Where the fuck did I put them? Here they are. The other day, as I was closing out, that I didn't get to read, but I did write them down. One was from Jay King, who said, happy belated birthday, Roxy. Life has kept me away from YouTube for a while. So glad to see you're still healthy and have a lockdown buddy, too. Hi, Steph. Uh, stay safe, ladies. Thank you, Jay King. And Glenn Caesar said, Guy talked about it on backstage yesterday. That was in reference to the Shmominati, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's go into the super chat. J-Dog said... Can Felicity Jones be RBG's proxy? I don't think it works like that. I wish. Just not how it happens. Uh, imagine if you could have a proxy. I really wish. Yeah. We just need to send positive healing vibes to RBG all we, day. We will discuss. We will discuss. Uh, Alexander Wilson, my girlfriend, was a wedding planner in Santa Rosa, California, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg showed up unannounced to officiate the wedding. I was like, who is this family? Um, Wow. You guys can never get divorced. That much is for sure. Uh, I like would die and go to heaven mm -hmm. if RBG officiated my wedding. Mm -hmm. um, it's fucking great. 
How cool is that? I love uh, celebrity officiants that pop in. Like I, I had a friend who had, I think it was Kevin Smith popped in to officiate. No way. Yeah, uh, that was like a Josh McCuga friend, I think. Wow. Um, yeah, judges are highly sought after for weddings. Is that true? Yeah, because they already they don't need to get the extra piece of pay- marriage license. They can just do it whenever with their job. So my dad probably does like one a year, I feel like. No way, for yeah. people he knows? Yeah, because first of all, they're really good speakers, most of them. And then also they're really professional and elegant, most of them. So it's Has a- your mom ever done one? No. Do you think your sister will do them? I, my dad and I would talk all the time about him doing mine if I ever got married, but my mom is very Catholic and shut that shit down quickly. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, no. Fuck. No internet? I told you this one's gone to shit. Mm-hmm. And then here's what happens. Then it, I I forget to turn off my hotspot because I connect to my phone and then my hotspot's been on for fucking days. Life is tough. It is. Fucking tough. Um, tougher for Ruth Bader Ginsburg though. Let's talk about it because while I'm getting this internet back up and running, don't need the internet to know what's going on here. Um, RBG is back undergoing chemotherapy, um, tough as fucking nails and is not leaving the Supreme court. Um, she's what? 89. Mm -hmm. And, and we have no choice, but for her to hold on. Like that's kind of the end of the sentence because, if she doesn't, we're in big, big trouble. And she's clearly so aware of that. Yeah. If you guys don't know why it's so important, it's because only the president can appoint Supreme Court justices. So that's why every time that there's a president in office, depending what party they are in, they will do whatever they can to get judges that are in their party, even though it's a nonpartisan position. But people suck. And there's a lot of cases that are now in the works in smaller Supreme Courts uh, around the country that will go up to the Supreme Court, like on abortion the smaller access. smaller courts are called Supreme Court? Yeah, there's there's su- state court Supreme Judges. Oh. Yeah. So, and if they keep getting appealed, which is the goal of most parties, then it goes to the Supreme Court where it becomes the law of the land. So that's abortion, gay rights, LBGTQ, trans rights, all of those are in the works right now. So if we lose, like you see a lot of the things are five to four, really, really close. So we can't lose RBG. Among other things, her being an angel on this earth. I think that none of us could possibly understand the immense amount of pressure she must feel. Oh my God. Like the last thing you want to do, I've never undergone chemo. I've obviously been close with a lot of people who have, um, you, you're exhausted. Mm-hmm. Like you just want to fucking go to sleep and be left alone. And, and probably at 89, regardless of chemo, you're exhausted. But when you've had cancer multiple times, and have undergone chemo multiple times and have to like physically be showing up somewhere. I mean, fuck off that that's our system, that that's the the system right now. I don't know how you feel about this stuff, but like the fact that you get lifetime positions in the Supreme court is like ludicrous to me. I mean, that's just so ch- that she has to do this right now in order to secure the future of the democratic party in the Supreme court is like so fucked up. Yeah, I mean, that's where some of her, the negative opinions on RBG come from is that a lot of people feel as though she should have stepped down from the bench when Obama wasn't, was president, Mm -hmm. because we could have had someone who was young, like Garland, and could have served multiple terms after. But it's like, she is the best that there is. If you look at the dissents that she's made throughout her time, there's no one that can match her. So it's really hard. Like, you yeah, the age thing and the stress that she must feel is unbearable, but we just need to keep pushing and vote in November. Like our life literally depends, depends on, on it. it. Many of ours do. It's really true. And the future and our and future lives. Fucking crazy. Um, let's see what's going on in the super chat. Mick Freezy says, Sup Rocks and Steph. Can we talk about the Hayden coming about Hayden coming back as Anakin? He's my favorite character in Star Wars now. He's almost certainly gonna be in the OB series. Are you excited or not? We talked about this a little bit the other day. Um, This is a big fuck yeah for me. Steph, how do you feel? Yeah, I love if he came back to play Anakin. That would just make my childhood 
complete. It feels like you can't have the series without Anakin. No, and how are you going to have Anakin so without weird. him? It yeah. It's going to be shitty. So. Not my favorite character, but he's definitely I one of them. Him. I love him. I love him. Uh, Alexander Wilson, she also did Seth Rogen's wedding. And she said Martin Starr was the biggest pretentious a-hole that there was. Really? I wasn't uh, surprised about he was outed. Uh. Um, huh. At the wedding? Interesting. Mm. Okay. Um, moving forward. No, Denman. Thanks, Steph. It's called Misphonia. Glad you're oh, both with the, us today. Oh, the triggering the of the ASMR, sounds. Yeah. Sorry, Noah. Sorry. Uh, it's our girl, Katie Robinson, the good witch. As much as we send them out, our good vibes don't seem to be very effective for actually manifesting good outcomes lately. Love you, girls. I agree. Sometimes it takes time to brew a healing a healing spell. I haven't been able to manifest shit these days. Like literal shit. I can't. And I'm putting out such good vibes. I mean, not really. Some of my vibes. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm putting out as good vibes as I possibly can mm -hmm. under the circumstances. <sighs> you just have to keep trying. As anytime my mom, this it's not her term. She taught me the term ant, automatic negative thinking. So when I was younger, I'd really suffer with this because I was so emotional and I would think like the worst thing was going to happen. So she said, every time you get an ant, automatic negative thought or thinking you squish it and then you have to counteract it with now I know a neutral thought or a positive thought. So you can, can you give me an example? Yeah. So if I was going to, if like one bad thing happened in the day, I'd be like, shit, now the whole day, like, fuck, my luck is so bad all the time. And then I'd be like, no, wait, 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 before you start roller coastering down, because if you notice not usually one bad thing doesn't happen in a day, it spirals, multiple things happen. It's because you haven't stopped your thoughts. So I'll stop in that, in that moment and say something like, something I'm grateful for or make a list of things I'm grateful for. That's usually the thing that kicks me out of it the fastest because I have so much to be grateful for that. I can't really stand in that moment. And then the day turns around. It's not always that easy. I made it seem really easy, but it took me years to, and then the day turns around and then you're happy. No, it took me years to work on that. And I still am constantly working on that, but that is a tool that you should put in your toolbox. I don't have it yet. Yeah. She ain't got it. You can reach for it when you feel like it. Hitman Hudson says, Steph, what is your favorite TV show? Also, which of Roxy's siblings is your favorite? Oh, that's the worst question ever. Uh, go with the TV show. Okay. One. Favorite TV show. Wow. That's a really hard one. On the top of my mind, I'm obsessed. I always have a big, big love for Orphan Black. And I've never seen it. Oh my gosh, I'm just obsessed with it. And then what else? I love Insecure, Game of Thrones. What else do I like? Those are the good ones. Yeah, those are my main three. Um, in terms of my siblings, I'm not going to let her answer that. But what I will say is that it is my sister's birthday on the 24th. So I've been birthday present shopping for her all week and I have more to go. They're her, your siblings are the best. You couldn't even possibly yeah, pick. They're really good. They're the best. They're really good. Um, my sister really wants tchotchkes. You know tchotchkes? No, like little, mm -hmm. yeah, like little trinkets. That's fucking hard to figure out. <laughs> Basically what Sarah got you, right? Kind of, but she wants tchotchkes for her place. Yeah. I gotta okay, figure so, it. yeah, we'll make a list. Like, candles. I gotta figure it yeah. the fuck out. I got to figure it the fuck out. Um, she's also traveling this for her birthday. She's going to visit her friends, which oh, makes so me very nervous. Be, yeah. Anybody flying right now just makes me really, really fucking nervous. Um, all right. After this super chat, let's get some presents going in here. Speaking of birthdays. Chris Martinez says, speaking of celebrity officiants, would you officiate Star and I's wedding? LOL, no pressure. Chris, are you going to be in uh, Los Angeles or where are you going? Um, and Wait. also, are you engaged? Are you guys engaged yet? Also, like, tell me more. Must know more. I would be so happy if you got to do that. I have officiated one wedding. It was my brother's, and I was really fucking good. Glenn Caesar says, Roxy and Steph, I'm not sure what my B day plans are yet. I'll probably get high and meditate and just see what happens. It should be interesting slash fun. Lend the best vibes always. King shit. I want to get high and meditate. Um, I think that tonight, Steph and I are participating in a table read of one of my scripts. 
So I'm really fucking excited about that. Um, unrelated to what you just said, Glenn, but I was just thinking about getting high and meditating and then maybe after the script read, then we get stoned to meditate. Yeah. But I'm very excited about it. I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right. Let's see. What do we got in this um, box A? There's three boxes. I'm taking my Triton. It's so amazing it that you do work. that. Oh, man. It fell. All right. Oh, yes. Another Funko. It's Monica. See, people oh, say oh, I'm. The, I thought one people was. People say I'm a Monica, but I feel like I'm a Phoebe, but maybe I'm a combo. And some people have even been known to call me Rachel, but I ain't that spoiled. I don't know the characters' personalities, but so dope, so freaking dope. Here's what I want to ask you guys: Am I supposed to? Can I? I have Funkos. All of my Funkos I've taken out of the box. Am I not supposed to do that because then they depreciate in value? But I like them to be out of the box so I can play with them. Because I'm somebody who actually likes to play with my toys. I like to play with dolls, okay? I do. Let's go into the super chat. Thank you to whoever got me the Monica Funko. Um, I'm sure Glenn will let me know who, but that's freaking awesome. Ben Jones says, prayers for you guys. I appreciate y'all's genuine care for others and how you've built this community. No simp intended. Take care. Thanks, Ben. You freaking uh, rock. Thank you. you thank rock. you. Yeah, for real, though. Chris Martinez says, we'll be engaged eventually, but we're practically there. Um, wow. A man who knows what he wants. 100%. Love that. Love that. Um, good. Let me know how you're going to pop the question. Noah Denman sending bunnies. Thanks, Noah. Appreciate that. You rock. Thank you. Thank you. Love bunnies. Uh, let's talk about something else going on. Nick Cannon, I guess we'll talk about it. I say it like that because I have found that I am the only Jewish person I know who is not severely, severely outraged and canceling him. Mm -hmm. um, I have not talked to any other Jews who are not like fucking livid. So I don't know whether that puts me, I don't know whether I should be more upset or whether I'm just so used to anti-Semitic remarks that this one doesn't strike me as offensively as other ones. And I'm playing a comparison game. Um, but yeah, my the Jewish community as a whole like wants him out. And I don't feel that way. So I'm having a hard time talking about it because I feel like I'm misrepresenting my community, but I'm just one person. And these are like my personal yeah. opinions on the situation. I found an interesting thread. This was amazing. I yeah, read, should I read some of it? I read it? the whole thread too. It was awesome. Do you think yeah, it would be helpful? Yeah. So this, it was definitely helpful with what I was trying to explain. Yeah. Her. yeah she so did this a is job. from Milana Queendom. Milana's Queendom. She says, my partner and I were just discussing how a lot of black people don't have the education around anti-Semitism to fully get why Nick Cannon's rant was messed up. So let me be your black and Jewish educational fairy godmother. First, love that because need somebody who can <laughs> who can actually that. speak yeah. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First, the Rothschild bank theory that ain't real. Many Jewish people in Europe were forced to work in banking because of laws restricting them from entering other types of work. This is where the stereotypes of stingy money grubbing, banking, etc., come from. But it was the racist anti-Semitic structures that pushed Jewish people into that system in the first place. This is similar to calling black people welfare queens, a system was created that locked people into place and stereotype was invented around it. So to pause for a second, for a lot of you guys who were asking me why it's rude to throw money at Jews, um, like legitimately wondering, I, I understand the question. You would think that giving somebody money is not a rude thing, but the way that Jews have been presented in the past with money is literally pennies will be thrown at them. That's something that my mom had growing up. Um, in New York and New Jersey and a lot of actually the people, the generation above us and even my gen, our generation um, have had, it's because of that theory yeah. that they are like greedy or stingy or money hungry that they get pennies thrown at them. So it's not actually um, a helpful thing. And, Cause I know you guys were like, wait, why is it bad to give somebody money? Um, it's like a, a demeaning thing. Sorry, continue, Steph. Okay. Um, no, that is because people are like, why is it bad? They just means like you care about money. Yeah. And it's like, um, okay. Yeah. 
Um, one old timey Jewish family being rich doesn't mean there's a conspiracy theory. It's like the wealth inequality has existed for generations. Gasp. If you want to know who runs the banks, Google Bank of America and Chase. Hint, they're very white and not and very not Jewish. Now, as far as Nick calling Jewish people savages, I hope it's pretty obvious why this is anti-Semitic. She puts a link as to like the terminology and like the where that kind of language started yeah and there's a couple of different things that she didn't talk about there but it's just a twitter thread so she's not able to but like jews have been referred to as savages for a really long time but especially during the holocaust um and even prior to that when there was so much anti-semitic red rhetoric going on what you would try to do is you try to dehumanize a group of people so that when you're mass murdering them you don't feel like you're murdering people so savages are not people um, and it's actually like a, a war tactic that people use all of the time um, to be able to turn off that part of your brain where you no longer believe somebody to be human. They're a savage, not a human. Yeah, that's right. perfectly put. It's really creepy. Uh, then Nick's whole original Semite thing, uh, there's so much wrong with it. So the idea is that Jews stole black people's identities as the true people of Israel. This means that Jewish people are to be blamed for all the races and black people experience. You see, this is a lot in Farrakhan's rhetoric. Taken to the extreme. Fucking Farrakhan. <laughs> you'd have uh, you'd have to exterminate racism. You'd have a wait, you'd have to exterminate racism. You'd have to exterminate Jewish people so black people can reclaim their spot as the chosen people. So what she's saying is that kind of rhetoric says that in order to eliminate racism for against black people, you would have to kill all the Jews because that's where it stems from, which is obviously not the case, but that's what this rhetoric means. Farrakhan and other black supremacists use Jewish people as- I'm surprised she used that term. At what black, black supremacist. supremacist oh yeah that is a really controversial conversation right now yeah um i was surprised she used it but she is black so that's her prerogative yeah yeah and scapegoat to push their own agenda yeah and just to reiterate i'm just reading reading tweets. this yeah, this yeah, is that, not of my so opinion. i paused i it's a term that i would literally never Same. ever use and neither would you yeah um but but this is her words yeah um, as a boogie, they use Jewish people as a boogeyman and a scapegoat to push their own agenda and a cult of personality. There can be no end to racism without an end to anti-Semitism. The us black people versus them Jewish people like Nick Cannon use breaks down when you have someone like me, a black Jew. In fact, many then under his feelings, there is no such thing as that. Yeah. Like it eliminates yeah. as a people. In fact, many anti-Semitic ideas of features are rooted in anti-blackness and vice versa, curly hair, big nose, et cetera. And she just went on with that. But it was, uh, I thought, really well-written. She did also say, and I think this is important to note, that one of the last things she said was, as a black Jew living in America, I acknowledge that it is much harder to be black in America than Jewish in America, which I don't think anybody um, argues as a whole. Oh, like, yeah. uh, just to be clear, because I know that there's been a lot of conversation around this. I do not under any circumstances think it's harder to be a Jew in this country than it is to be black in this country. Do I think some Jews have harder lives than some black people? Yes, but that's not what we're talking about. Do I think some black people have harder lives than Jews? Definitely, fucking definitely. But the point being that she was saying, like, as somebody who I, I just think it's important that she was saying as somebody yeah. who's black and Jewish in this place it is fucking harder to be black um and that should be acknowledged so that i take that into account when hearing nick cannon's thoughts because what he said is fucking stupid it's really ignorant um it is hateful i don't know if he i don't think he's hateful necessarily it was hateful um but yeah i'm having a lot of trouble with it so anyway i loved that thread because i think it really broke it down but also i was surprised because um, he has, he's keeping his job. So we know that his Viacom deal, they closed the deal. They eliminated him and he was pissed. Then we also saw that Fox was keeping him on for Masked Singer in his position there. So Viacom, no. Fox, yes. And then he had a daytime talk show that he was supposed to be doing and it's gotten pushed, but it's still happening, but it's been pushed. And they, and they cited the reason for the push as these anti-Semitic remarks. So that kind of confused me. Is that like a slap on the wrist? Like you did this, we're still gonna work with you, but like not this second? Yeah, or like you're just waiting out to see, let it pass in the news cycle. Yeah, just kind of strange. But uh, it's interesting because I, I don't know where I, I'm like with you, where I think that it is so hard. You can't possibly understand what it's like to be a grown black man in America and like done all the research you've done. Like things get like, 
you say things out of term a lot. So I don't really want to speak on him, but I, I will say that in terms of ha- keeping someone's platform, there are so many talented people out there that I don't feel like people deserve things unless they're like really, really behaving. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I know what you mean. I know. Uh, this is something he said. I mean, that was said about the pushback of this show. So the news was announced in a joint statement from Lionsgate and Deadmar Mercury provided by CNN on Friday, which is today. According to the statement, the Nick Cannon talk show will not debut this year. After conversations with Nick, we do believe that his public comments don't reflect his true feelings and his apology is heartfelt and sincere. We want to continue the healing process as he meets with leaders of the Jewish community and engages in a dialogue with our distribution partners to hear their views. We are standing by Nick in our hope that by fall 2021, he will be able to use his extraordinary talent and perform to entertain, enlighten, and unite his audience on the Nick Cannon talk show. Lionsgate and Debmar Mercury condemn anti-Semitism, racism, and hate speech. It runs counter to everything we stand for. Interesting. Interesting that like essentially what you guys are saying is hopefully by fall 2021, he won't be anti-Semitic if he is now. And like, I get that that's not exactly your words, but like you're putting him on the opposite of a press tour. You're putting him on an educational tour, which is kind of a unique thing that we haven't been doing much as a society, educating each other. We're putting him on an educational tour and hoping by 2021, he gets it which I don't know that that's the wrong move. I I actually think it might be the right move. It's just kind of strange. Like, and you don't hear that often from a network. Yeah, it is strange. I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah, he'll have to come up with something before. If he does have a talk show, he'll have to make a statement because it's like a lot of people don't really want to listen to you anymore. Not because they don't find you talented, but it seems like you don't want to talk to a lot of people <laughs> this is for different reasons obviously but when um chris hardwick had everything happen um uh why the fuck am i blanking on her with chloe dykstra when she came out and said everything that had happened to her when they were dating um and they were dating and a lot of people deemed it to be him as a bad boyfriend but not abusive I didn't necessarily fall into that camp but that's what the general consensus of the public seemed to be but I don't like to watch him anymore, regardless of of that, because I don't think he's a good dude. Like whether or not he did anything illegal is one thing, but like I don't really want to watch somebody who makes their girlfriend cry every day because I have a hard time. Well, there's just so many people, people that you can listen to and get in. Like I believe in energy, obviously. So if I'm putting you on, like I, I know there's going to be a transfer of energy. And like if I think you're not like the greatest human, when there are so many great humans, why would I listen to you? Right. But the 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 point that I'm getting at with the Chris Hardwick thing is, is that he is not an actor. He is a talk show host, and so I have a harder time with that than actors because. Now I'm supposed to be listening to you and valuing your opinion. And so with Nick Cannon, I'm going to have a really hard time taking his advice, valuing his opinion, mm-hmm. because I know who you, I know who part of you is now. So that's what I think really is hard mm. about being a personality is that you're watching that person for them. And if not you're watching for their, it, yeah, yeah, not totally. for their talent. It's not, not for the, the music they're putting out. Right. Yeah. So now you're you're asking me to sign up to watch something by a guy that like has some anti-Semitism in his soul. And and do I believe people can change? Absolutely I do. But it's kind of like when you get to know some people you receive even on YouTube, they'll do all of these like life lesson videos. And it's like if you don't trust them as humans, if you know more about who they are as people and you don't trust them, then you don't really want to take their advice or no. their opinions because like their life might not be going very well. So that's why it's really important to look at who you're getting advice from and who you're, whose show you're watching if it's a personality. So I don't think this will bode very well for Nick Cannon. I don't think that he's going to be canceled, but I do think he's going to take his fair share of hits mm-hmm. because of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's what, maybe that's right. I, I really, I'm not the. Uh, yeah. It's like one of those that I'm like, can I just stay out of this? I know, time? I know. Because I've liked him for so long. So that dude, drumline is forever a forever banger. And like kind of an important movie, too. Very important. Uh, yeah. Are you kidding me? It was awesome. It still is awesome. Yeah. My dad talks about it to this day. Can we put on that drumline? 
Amazing. Glenn Caesar says, as I said the other day, the Funkos are for me. Do whatever you want with them, Roxy. If you want to take them out and play with them, do it. They're yours. Glenn, you are so freaking sweet. Obsessed with you. Appreciate that. Alexander Wilson says, personally, my grandpa was in the army during World War II and fought to help liberate Jewish concentration camps. When they came back, the Jewish could, could get benefits that the black soldiers couldn't. That created dissension. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. I'll yeah. Have to look into that. I think that from what I understand, um, and I could be wrong, uh, a lot of the benefits that what's, what's good about being Jewish isn't good is not the right word. Forgive me, but you don't walk into a room and everybody knows you're Jewish. Yeah. So a lot of Jews post-war lied about being Jewish Yeah. because they're able to do that. You're not really able to well unless you're passing you're not when you walk into a room and you're black you're black mm -hmm. um and so from my understanding a lot of jews actually were incredibly persecuted after the war it was not like they came back here i know my grandfather had a very um challenging time it was not like they came back here and people were pro-jews anti-semitism in this country was extreme especially because we had lost so many soldiers to fight anti-semitism the resentment towards jews was at an all-time high after the war um, people were fucking livid that we went to go save people. A lot of people were livid that we went to go save people that weren't their people. Um, so I think that the Jews were not able to get benefits as well, but I think a lot of them fucking lied. Yeah, which I agree. they were able to do. I know for a fact, obviously, none of the black soldiers who fought in the war for all of our freedoms got any Anything. the loans, yeah. the money. But I do not know about Jew the Jewish Americans. But I will say that it, a conspiracy theory I truly believe in is that if you look throughout history, they have pit minority groups against each other with things like this since the beginning of time on purpose. So Not that minorities we, persecuted groups. Yeah, yeah, persecuted groups so that we don't ride for each other when it's like it's uh, it is an us against them. It's corrupt versus non-corrupt. So we do. This is why it makes me so sad with the Nick Cannon stuff, because we have to be together to win this. Yeah. Because there's not enough of us individually. No, neither group. Yeah. If you look at the what you said, a percentage of Jewish Americans, less than 5%. I think it's less than 1%. Yeah, and then... Um, oh, Americans, I think it's less than 2%. Black Americans is 8%, I believe. I think that they're, it's getting higher. Higher? Hopefully. Yeah, I think it's in the teens, but I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. Um, Either way, it's a, it's a we have to be together. Yeah. <sighs> there's that sound again. Yeah. That's my fuck this sound. Um, should we open another? Yeah. Button? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, queens. Hey. Taking up my trident, my trident, my trident. It's, it's like the best paper opener ever. Okay. Let's see what we got. Hold on. Can't see anything yet. Oh, I think these are the last two Funkos. Wow. Wait, how many characters and friends are there? What are you talking about? There's six main characters. Where have you been? Oh, I thought there was four. Name name the friends characters. These are fucking awesome. Monica Lewinsky. No, I'm just kidding. Monica. Monica. Right, Phoebe. Mm -hmm. Ross. Mm -hmm. Matt. No, wait. Phoebe. Matt, Phew Perry, and Matt LeBlanc. Yeah. Who are they? Okay, Phoebe. These are fucking amazing. No, don't Rachel. Okay. Monica. Ross. Don't Joey. Look, don't look the box. You're missing like everybody's favorite character. Chandler. That was pretty good. No, it wasn't. Chandler, Joey, was really Ross, Rachel, good. Monica, Phoebe. Can you name the Seinfeld characters? Uh, yeah, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of them. They have four. Shit. Maybe that's why. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. Yeah. We'll think of more as we go. Yeah. Embarrassing. No, it's not. It's just an unbelievable thing that just happened. <laughs> it's not embarrassing. Um, it's just unbelievable. It's just really, truly unbelievable. Um. Okay. Probably the sweaty balls in my brain. Can't think. They're in your head? They're in my brain. Um, all right, let's go. What was the other thing I want to talk to you guys about? Oh, oh, again, and fuck no news for today. Should we even talk about this fucking Meg Thee Stallion, Tory Lane stuff? Oh my God. 
I guess. This is unbelievable. So here are the facts that we know. We know Meg the Stallion was shot in the foot. Um, we know that she was with Tory Lanez. We know that he was arrested for a gun charge. Now it's come out that they that multiple publications have said that they believe that he is the one who shot her as she was trying to leave the SUV. What? This is shocking for so many reasons, mainly because they're actually friends. Like they've been with each other in each other's IG lives all summer, like through the quarantine, not all summer, all quarantine. Like I've seen them together multiple times. They're actually friends. She was on his show. He was on her IG live. And then they were in the same car together coming from the same party. So what happened? Like if this happened for lack of better words, you don't just like shoot your friends, even if you're fighting. No, that's not like something people do. So was it a, a miss? Like was something else, was somebody else firing and he, mi I mean, there's just gotta be more to this story. TMZ has been keeping us very up to date. I don't usually say those words very often. Um, page six, everybody was reporting that this was Tory Lanez. And then TMZ has kind of stepped it back for a second. Um, as of this morning at 11.49 a.m., here's what they said. LAPD is now officially looking into the allegation Megan the Stallion suffered gunshot wounds. And they're taking a hard look at Tory Lanez as the potential trigger man. Law enforcement tell, sources tell TMZ detectives have now opened an assault with a deadly weapon investigation into what allegedly happened early Sunday morning, shortly before cops pulled over Tory's chauffeur driver SUV in the Hollywood Hills. So keep in mind, today is Friday. This happened almost a week ago, which is wild. As we respond, uh, as we reported, sources connected to the investigation say Tory allegedly shot Megan in the feet as she exited the SUV on the heels of an argument that erupted in the SUV. Remember, Tori was arrested and booked for possession of a concealed weapon, a handgun found in the SUV, upgrading the investigation to assault with a deadly weapon could mean new charges are coming. Tori hasn't been named a suspect yet, but our law enforcement sources said cops are lasered in on him. Now sources connected to Tori say it seems he will claim it was accidental if he's charged for the shooting, the fact LAPD is investigating it as an assault with a deadly weapon as opposed to attempted homicide could mean they, at least in theory, believe it was accidental. That but or... there was multiple gunshots and it was as she was leaving the car. Yeah. But she here's the thing. She if this is true, this is just one person's th theory, she must be trying to cover for him. Well, that's what I was gonna say. So it's I because you can easily figure out if the bullets match his gun and the gun matches his registration with it or like it's his fingerprints, whatever. It's so easy to put that together. What isn't is the testimony. So if she's not talking that and he did shoot her, there is no motive, which means it can fall on accidental. He'll still get charged for I don't think he had the right to carry that gun. Um, conceal it at least that's what the charge is that they're saying but I agree I think um, it it will depend on her and I don't think that she'll say anything just because snitch culture is not respected in rap culture and if she was going to she probably would have already yeah username says Meg tweeted something like 27 minutes ago uh Interesting. Let me pull that up. Was it regarding this or was it completely unrelated? I'm I'm really fucking happy she's okay. Me too. Uh, because imagine, imagine if she wasn't. I mean, then we're talking about a completely different charge. Oh, this is what man. she said. Black women are so unprotected and we hold so many things in to protect the feelings of others without considering our own. It might be funny to y'all on the internet and just another messy topic for you to talk about, but this is my real life and I'm real life hurt and traumatized. That's also another layer to it. I hadn't seen this, but I had a lot of my black female friends on Twitter talking about how they saw people joking about this. And it's like one of those things where you're like, your first instinct is like, that's unbelievable. I don't believe that. But then if you really think about the history of how we treat black women and the disrespect that the black women get and the lack of listening and concern that we have for black women, this is totally makes sense. And talking about protecting others. Yeah. In this, tweet. this is interesting. Um, Alexis John day, uh, who I don't know responded though. She is verified. So she must be somebody um, in 
pop culture said um, before anyone attempts to argue with you. And then she put this tweet that says in America, approximately three women are killed by a spouse, lover, or partner every day. In recent years, 53% of these women are black. Black women are four times more likely than their white peers to be murdered by a lover and seven times more likely to be killed when pregnant than a white mm-hmm. woman. Um, it's not even that I'm surprised by those statistics because I, I read about this all the time, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what Meg the Stallion and um, Tori's relationship was. I don't know what argument took place. And we don't know yet that he was the one who shot her. Um, all signs seem to be pointing towards that, but we don't know what happened. Uh, but how could that be funny? Like that this It's certainly not fucking funny. Yeah, it's a this- lot of things. It's sad. It's confusing. It's upsetting as fuck. It makes me a little angry. Um, but like zero part of me is laughing about that. Yeah. She was shot. One thing I've been doing lately, or not like this isn't one thing I've been one thing I've been trying to communicate with people lately is that we really need to be standing up for black women because historically they've been for us for all, there for us for all of the fights that we've been fighting. And th- like anytime you hear someone talk shit about a black woman, like shut that shit down. Like it's not fun. We're not doing that shit. It should have never been happening, but it shouldn't happen anymore. Period. We have to do better for them. This is so crazy that she even has to tweet that. Yeah. It's fucking really upsetting. Um, in the stream lab, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer, Steph So Dope is the username. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. And they say, uh, please say Steph will stay forever, curse lit. Uh, Steph, stay forever. I think Steph is leaving literally like either tomorrow or the next day. I don't even know if you can stream from- I know, it's such shit. Maybe it's like we can try it and if it doesn't work, I just sign off. <sighs> Yeah, we're going to have to try something. I'm not happy about this. Um, all right, going back into the super chat. Dizzle D says, each please tell one quick fun memory about each other. Please and thank you, Dizzle. That's a very sweet thing to ask for. Um, fun memory. Steph and I have been not very fun recently. Um, yeah. Although we have been cuddling and watching TV shows often. True. So a fun memory i am um, when we tried to attempt doing the elevator move that was amazing that was so fun also oh that god just like last one. summer comic con that was amazing we too. were lit 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 so lit if Haley matthews is in the chat right now there was one night we went to a boat party she usually shows herself yeah we got there. We were in the lit, clouds. Lit city, bitch. And we were just so happy because the best people were at Comic-Con. Roxy introduced me to all, like, her homies in the space that were just the nicest fucking people ever. Yeah, and then that it. night after, like, the best parties, we, like, stumbled into this gaming room. It was, like, a Nintendo setup. But nothing was in there. Nobody was in there. It was an empty room. It was very late. Yeah. And we were just sitting. I was doing videos for Skybound. Oh, yeah. Um, and we recorded this video as I was like drunkenly just like rolling around on this green astroturf, whatever. And they called me the next day and they were like, we just so you know, we like clearly couldn't use that. I mean, you were out of your mind. I was like, cool, cool. And Haley Matthews friends, cause they had like recognized us from different, like it's from something we've done. And she said, I think we see Steph and Roxy, but they look really drunk. So we didn't go and say hi to them. And we're like, shit. Facts that we were. <laughs> Before we get out of here, I want to uh, open this. Well, I don't know what this one is. This last present. I think it's the last one. This yeah, um, Glenn Caesar. Let me know if there was anything that you didn't that got ordered and we didn't show, because then there's a little issue. The end of the birthday celebration, guys. I'll have to wait till next year. Uh, except for this Glenn. is a box in a box. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You know what this is? No. Why do you say no like you're mad? I don't know what it is. No. <laughs> okay. Oh. It's a bag in a box. And a- wow, this is real unboxing. Okay. And now the suspense kicks in. 
Oh, I think. Oh, my... I think these are resistance bands. No way. <gasps> Which would be epic. That's epic. We need some workout stuff. Oh my god. Wait, how did you guys know that this would be amazing? Is that what it is? Because I think so. Yeah, right? it totally is. Wait, what? Is... Oh shit. Wait, how do I even use all of these? We'll ones? have to look at the directions. These are like intense ass resistance bands. Oh yeah, that's. Oh, these are dope. That's like. What do Ooh, they link on to? Pushing weight. Mm -hmm. Um, this. Oh, these are fucking sick. Yeah. Oh, obsessed with you guys. This is awesome. It's a bag in a box and another box. And then there's <laughs> resistance bands in the bags in the box. The oh. bags in the box. Please let me know, Glenn, who got these for me. Adore you, whoever you are. Need that. Got to stay in shape. Got to stay fit and didn't have anything like this. So that is super duper, super duper helpful. Um, all right. Before we get out of here, a couple more things going on in here. John Darius says, Hey, Roxy and Steph, question. I'm 25 in grad school and I haven't been in a serious relationship. Mainly I've focused on my studies. Is there something wrong? I'm not seeing or overthinking it. Wishing you to a great weekend. Um, Steph, what do you think? I don't think there's something wrong with you at all. I think you've said it, that you were focusing on studies. So now it's about focusing on the other things you want in your life while keeping studies important because it seems like you're still in school. I would really be like, now I'm ready for this. And what kind of relationship do you want? What does that look like? Who does she, he, or them look like and act like towards you? Yeah, I I don't know enough about you to know um, – if you've tried to be in relationships, if you haven't tried, but based on this alone, you, you've been focused on your studies and that's really important. You're only 25. You've got uh, three quarters of your life left to live. Uh, and I think that a lot of times people rush into relationships too early. Um, and so I think that now you're more mature and ready for it. And I don't think that there's anything to overthink, um, especially because that's a fact. You know, you're just speaking in facts right now. You've been in grad school. You haven't been in a serious relationship. That hasn't been where your focus has been. So what's to overthink? Though? That's what's happened. And if you want to be with somebody moving forward, you will uh, prioritize that. And that's a great thing to prioritize. Totally. So I think that you... I didn't mean to put that up, but it's shout a bag out. in a box. Shout out, shout out. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Broken Blue in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Uh, so Streamlabs wasn't working for like 20 minutes. Oh, sorry. And I had some serious anxiety. LOL. <laughs> Roxy, did Jesse Williams actually make the video, birthday video for you? Have you guys watched Hamilton yet? No, I haven't. Didn't get a birthday video from him. You guys I want that to happen so bad. You guys hyped me up. I still have three minutes left of Hamilton. I do this sometimes. Let's just start it again, start to finish. It's amazing. I I got to see what happens in the last three minutes. But it's very, very good. Um, Glenn Caesar in here said, Roxy, the last gift is from Maddie B. Yes, Maddie B. By the way, Garth and Susie Easton have asked about sending you gifts too. So can we get an Amazon wish list? I know you said that you've tried creating one for yourself, but you don't think it worked. I can help if you want. Yeah, I need help. I don't get how to do it. Um, I also was using somebody's Amazon that I'm no longer using their Amazon anymore. And now I'm using, I got to figure out like how to, how to Amazon these days. How to prime. Uh, okay. I think that's it for the show today. Um, gotta get the fuck out of here. Uh, wish me. Sometimes this happens. You just like, you're having a moment It'll... with rocks and like an hour has gone by. It's been pretty great. And then just off the ledge she goes. And you're I'm like, off. Where'd you come? I'm down there. You're just here. Splat. <laughs> Fuck. Fucking splat. Done. I need to go bring the ER crew down there, so we'll have to... Got a blast. I have a good prompt for the comments. Oh! Is it the thing we're thinking about? No. You, what is it? Oh, girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We need help. Okay, we need help. We're going to be doing, like we said, we had a really awesome meeting with our third cheetah sister, cheetah Bad Bruja herself, Darina, on World Girls. And we're going to be hopefully having some episodes coming out very, very soon. And we wanted your ideas on what you think could be a good outside filmable thing that we can do, that we can give a world. Producible, filmable. So please leave that in the Cheapable. comments. Cheapable, producible, filmable, outdoorsable. 
um, something that we can give a whirl. So leave those in the comments. Um, and then we have a second prompt for you guys to leave in the comments as well. What was it? Oh, what are you doing this weekend? What's the plans? <laughs> What's the quarantine plan? What did you say when we started that I, what did you do to make yourself laugh so hard? Uh, do you guys remember? That, oh, I did said a really bad joke, like an awful one that wasn't a was joke so and just like felt like laughing really hard. You did such a great job. Whew. All right. Much love, homies. Uh, <laughs> see you very soon. Tomorrow, 1 p.m. live at the Roxy. Maybe with Steph Sabra. Yeah. You're going to be here? Yeah. At least for then. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, y'all know say. Stay safe. Let us know what we should do for World Girls. What should we give a whirl? Maybe it's something with those resistance bands. Um, and keep fighting. Let us know what you're doing this weekend. It's a very exciting prompt. Don't you forget it. Much love and see you tomorrow.